All right, what's going on YouTube? Dan from South Hall Computing. And today is, yeah, November 8th. It's 75 degrees right now, which it's never gonna be that much. And um, yeah, we decided that uh, we're gonna take a little ride here because it's freaking gorgeous out. And, um, I don't know, I kind of enjoyed the last little narration slash ride thing that we did. Um, I guess the top subject of uh, topic for this time around is uh, education and why it's important for the IT field. Um, I'm basically going to start off with my quote unquote career and how that worked out. Uh, to put it uh, simply, I. Um, I started with my uh, fascination with technology probably at the age of, Christ, what, how old was I? Probably like 10, where I was definitely big into electronics and whatnot. And um, yeah, it, uh, it was just one of those things that where I just became fascinated with it and computers were the next evolution. And I uh, started on a Macintosh Plus. This thing was, I believe, a 6800K CPU, and it, <laughs> I think it ran at like eight megahertz, which was freaking ridiculous at the time. Uh, wasn't the fastest thing, but hey, I got it for free because a bank that no longer exists uh, called First Constitution, I think it was. And basically those guys said, if you opened a savings account with us, we'll give you a free computer. and. That's pretty much how everything started for me. Um, I had that for a whole bunch of years. And um, I, uh, you know, obviously I had friends that were into computers uh, in grade school and high school and whatnot. Uh, I actually, um, one of my buddies, uh, Rich there, he was like uh, the PC master. I mean, this kid was going to all the computer shows and um, if you don't know depending on your age back in the good old days you know before prior to the internet and uh, all that fun stuff basically you would have local computer shows that you would go to that were hosted by either uh, like say the Marriott or um, your local high school essentially a bunch of vendors would go there and um, they would essentially sell everything from hard drives, enclosures, to printers, to monitors, you name it. And this was like well predates the flat, uh, flat screen um, days, which I um, can't even imagine that anymore. Uh, those uh, giant CRT monitors were freaking huge and heavy, but the only benefit to those were you could easily <laughs> warm up a cold room after uh, keeping one of those suckers on for a couple of hours. So, yeah, uh, started there, and uh, my buddy Rich gave me one of his old uh, 386s. I don't recall what the specs were on it. And, um, yeah, that started my entrance to the PC world. So I was always pro-Mac. PCs always had their own thing going on. But, um, wow, a lot of traffic on this road today. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was primarily a Mac guy and uh, also a PC guy. It wasn't, I wasn't too PC savvy, but you know, I figured, I figured out a way to navigate through the PC world. Uh, and you know, if it wasn't for him, I don't think I'd have any quote unquote uh, PC knowledge period in the beginning of my career. Um, and then it progressed to high school, where you know, unfortunately, you know more than your professors, which. You know, at the time, it's understandable because computers are still a quote-unquote new thing. So, you know, it's not like I was trying to upstage my quote-unquote um, uh, computer teacher there. But, I mean, it, it, it was what it was. And uh, it uh, was one of those things where I was constantly getting called to the office to fix a computer, printer, or uh, by the um, assistant principal just to get things done. So... Um, yeah, it progressed into college, 
where I uh, worked for the university's uh, computer lab. Did that for um, a good, God, I want to say six years. And unfortunately, I never finished my degree. I was always going part-time and I got the opportunity to work at a different university full-time and um, back then, I mean, God, IT guys were at a, uh, a premium. Now, there was such a shortage on demand that it was, you know, um, I figured at the time, I was like, well, yeah, you know, my education didn't do much in regards to what um, I wanted to do with my life as far as being a server admin, technician, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, it was just, <laughs> it was one of those things where I, you know, me being arrogant saying, oh, I don't need that. What the hell do I need uh, my uh, diploma for? And quite honestly, I was only one class away and you would think getting that far um, with my uh, education, I would just want to get, uh, get it over with, but you know, uh, young Dan was not that too sharp of a tool when it came to, uh, to that. So I did um, IT work for about uh, 10 and a half years where I decided that um, I needed to get out, I needed to change the scenery. I had an opportunity to become an IT director for a small company and um, it, uh, that was interesting. It, um, it was kind of nice not having to worry about an academic schedule at times. Uh, it, had its own, it had its own set of challenges and um, I liked it because it forced me to learn more about the PC industry, let's put it that way. And um, I was uh, I was fairly you know good with PCs, but it was one of those things where uh, I was definitely still a Mac guy. That's why the university hired me as a Mac guy. I um, I was de definitely at the time I was able to do things that uh, quote unquote you weren't supposed to be able to do for a Mac, but with my creativity and Apple script and all that fun stuff, I was able to do. Um, were able to accomplish a lot, let's put it that way. So, um, yeah, I was, I was toasted by the whole academic situation. So I moved on to uh, the private sector for about five, well, actually, sorry, probably seven years. Um, I basically uh, was getting burnt out being, uh, hold on one second. So yeah, I was a little burnt out um, from doing the, uh, the IT director thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, the money was amazing, but I just wasn't a good good match for me. Um, it just, uh, the, in the intensity of the job just, I mean, obviously every place is different, but this was a, a brand new startup and I just, I, I, I couldn't all be there, especially at the time having a daughter too. So that added into the complexity of it all. So we uh, fast forward to um, at the end of my uh, year after me being director, I tried my own small business. Um, while it was fun in the beginning, I just didn't have the customers. And dummy me, I was like, sure, you could start your own business. You can do whatever you want. But I did not have the clientele to help sustain me. So. Um, fast forward a year after me uh, starting my own business, I also started doing the YouTube thing at the time, and it was just one of those things where I, uh, my marriage fell apart too, so you know, it's just, just kept on stirring that uh, wonderful pot there. So, um, found myself trying to find a job. Now here's where the key point here is. I, um, I basically was like, all right, um, I need a job or a job that you know has a consistent paycheck let's put it that way and um, I need to start job hunting well I started working full-time in 1999 here's me five years ago trying to find a job and let me tell you I was no longer a quote-unquote hot commodity it was a nightmare now I went on god at least 10 job sites 
Yeah, I want to say at least 10. The majority of them, yeah, here's my advice. When you're looking for a job, you have to subscribe to all the, the actual job uh, sites because while most of them will have the same uh, job listings, they may have one that's not listed anywhere else. And that's where you have to be on them every single day. Um, I know it sucks, but hard work pays off when it comes to that. And in addition to that, it took me almost nine months. And mind you, I had, God, almost 20 years of tangible experience. My issue was, because I didn't have a college degree, all the computers are automatically bypassing my, um, my what you call it, my resume. So I was like, oh, that's just beeping fantastic. I was like, wow, um, okay. So what did I have to do? I had to eat my humble pie. And uh, essentially I went and <laughs> went back to college and figured out what class I needed and I got my degree. It only took 20 years to get it, but I got it. And wouldn't you know, I now of course, I end up getting a job right before getting my degree. The moment I got my uh, job, all of a sudden I update my resume and everybody and their mother is freaking calling me now because hey, hey, you got, um, uh, you got a degree, you meet our criteria, whatever. And uh, now everybody and their mother was uh, trying to get a hold of me. So I thought that was rather interesting and also sad at the same point. And I'm pretty sure I just saw that guy run a red light. So um, then another thing I was noticing too was uh, A plus certification. Now the hypocrisy of A plus these days, number one, it's no longer you take the test and you're grandfathered for life uh, with your certification. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's almost three years, I think it is, where it lasts. And um, I had to get it because people are also requiring it. But um, the thing with A plus is they won't, um, they won't support the right to repair bill. Uh, it's just one of those things that uh, you may or may not have heard. It's like, you know, our industry requires us to actually repair stuff. And everything is becoming the quote unquote Apple model or Tesla model where you bought something, but it feels like you're leasing it now because you're not allowed to make modifications to your device. The iPhone 12, you can't even swap two cameras, two brand new uh, Apple branded cameras. So if uh, Apple uh, iPhone 12 uh, on uh, iPhone A, and uh, you swap it with iPhone B, they won't work. They're all married by probably would say serial number or something for that router. So it's like they don't even allow you to do what I consider uh, for a tech guy, a perfect way of, um, uh, or I'm sorry, not perfect, but a way of doing some sort of self repair. God forbid you do the batteries on your, uh, uh, laptop on an Apple it's almost a chore and a half but they 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 qualified it as no they own the rights to everything you're, you're not you're not qualified in other words which is absolutely ridiculous in the good old days you were able to repair whatever you wanted matter of fact you would be able to open up a device and there would be a schematic showing you how this device works what parts are what and then you could easily just attempt to self repair it but it seems like that that's not even a thing anymore. So actually, I want to go this way. So yeah, it's um, the repair industry is getting more and more software based, which I mean, it's hit or miss with that. But then you got, again, the Apple example there where they, um, they've completely locked down iOS. Uh, for your phones and uh, iPads. Now Apple's coming out with an ARM CPU, which basically is the same processor that you find inside your iPhone. So that means your your ability to control your device is becoming uh, more and more uh, less uh, available. And um, honestly, once uh, when Apple once Apple goes fully ARM CPUs, I'm done. Uh, I've done uh, you know Intel. Hackintoshes because I'm building a computer with similar specs to a Mac Pro for a fraction of the price. Their markups are absolutely ridiculous. They come off as a quote unquote premium product, but you know, um, they're, you know, taking shortcuts and 
again, Lewis Rossman, he points it out all the time where um, he'll find product designs and unless you have a warranty from Apple, they're going to pretty much charge you the entire cost of a uh, newer laptop. So I think it's just freaking hilarious, in my opinion, where Tesla is doing something similar too, where you bought a car, but you're not allowed to do your own repairs. That to me is just asinine. And thank God for people like Rich Rebuilds to essentially forcing change, forcing people to um, having the ability to swap out the components in their car. But, um, Wow, this is an amazing day, by the way. So anyway, sorry, a little sidetrack, a little rant about Apple and Tesla's repair policies, not allowing the consumer to fix something that they actually purchased. I can imagine somebody saying, oh, you bought your house, but you're not allowed to repair it. It's like pretty much the same thing, my friends. And I'm not even talking about soft software. I'm talking about just physical hardware here. But, you know, but anyway, so... Getting back to, <laughs> getting back to my uh, career. So essentially, um, I uh, got my degree. Oh, I remember this puppy. Got my degree, got my A plus certification only because I had to, because it's just one more thing that, you know, I would have on top of somebody else when it came down to getting, um, getting a job. So if it was an even split, Oh, well, this guy's got A+. Plus. Well, then good for them, you know? So, I don't know what the f*** this New Yorker's doing. Jesus Christ. Just go. It's like, I'm going 20 miles per hour. Um, you could pass. It's okay. So, um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and, and essentially, it's just like one of those things where I was, I was like, I got, I got to be able to get an income, uh, steady income here. I have a kid, um, and uh, I, I got to make sure that you know I'm able to provide for this, this little one. So, huh, that's free, nice, uh, man. But yeah. So, uh, fast forward, I finally get a job back into the, um, uh, which I'm called. Oh, can't even think. Finally got a job back into um, uh, the private sector. Um, uh, did that for like about a year. And then I was actually able to go to academics because I was essentially persuaded that, you know, um, it's uh, a whole different uh, um, vibe. And it was true. I, uh, from where, where it was before and when I returned, it was definitely different, but it was still a lot of work. I mean, I'm not getting any younger and um you know anything that i could do uh i'll end um at that point because i was just essentially desperate for a job and then just keep on working on it and get get a better job uh never stop looking and all that and uh second opportunity came up to move elsewhere in the university and to be quite frank uh it was the same pay but honestly like half the responsibilities um I was like, I'd be, I'd essentially be a fool. Uh, no, you know, half the responsibilities, didn't have to work late hours. I mean, that's a no-brainer. I mean, I'm in my 40s, for God's sake, and I really, really don't need uh, to be working late at night, especially when you're having a kid, because, you know, you got to stick to schedules, and, you know, and not to mention, I actually want to see my kids. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, so the importance takeaway here is get your degree because now if you're looking to get into the IT field it's an absolute requirement because your your resume is automatically going to get skipped over um, a plus certifications currently are still a thing so you definitely want to do that um, uh, as sucky as their stance on uh, not um, getting on board with the right to repair bills uh, shame on you uh, a plus certification um, but yeah it just it's crazy uh, that you know no matter how much uh, tangible and relevant work experience I wasn't able to get a job until I actually got my degree so fun stuff so um, yeah I think I'm gonna end the video here something short I 
forgot my auxiliary battery pack, so I'm not sure how long the, the battery in the camera lasts. Got it. I hope it lasted long enough. I mean, we could actually check right now. Let's, let's have a look. Are we still recording? Yeah, actually, we're still going, so... Yeah, and we're still recording. Okay, cool. Um, hopefully, that's a good angle. Yeah, so the takeaway is you, you gotta, you gotta always think of it this way. You gotta one-up your competition. You always gotta have one extra thing because if it's a dead tie, man, you're not gonna get the job. You're gonna lose out every single time. So put in the work, get your certs, get what you need to get and get that job. Um, obviously, personality is a big thing too. Um, and not just, uh, wow, I've never been down this road before. And uh, that's, a, that's another thing to bear in mind, having patience. And like, honestly, IT guys should be uh, allowed to uh, achieve sainthood for the, the nonsense and quite honestly, some of the abuse when you get when people are at their worst. Oh, that's an interesting junction box. Is that fiber? Huh. But, ooh, that was a little slick. But yeah, um, yeah, definitely one up people when it comes to your education, compatibility, and um, you gotta have a lot of patience when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> I got the funniest look, like the lady. <laughs> yeah, bloggers here in Connecticut are not a thing. Not like out west where, you know, people take cameras. I thought, I think the first time I saw a vlogger was when I went <laughs> to get lunch in New Haven and this was apparently the first Taco Bell that opened at a served alcohol. And I just was taken back when you see somebody just eating in front of a camera and drinking a beer. And I'm like, wow, uh, I, I don't know. It, it, to me, it's almost like um, being conceited. I mean, I don't even know if that's the right word for that. Um, but yeah, I just, it's just one of those things where Oh, what is this guy doing? Um, yeah, it's not for me. That's pretty much why I don't share uh, my face uh, half the time. And uh, oh, I'm gonna go this way. Um, and to be brutally honest, too, it's like I, you know, I'm not putting myself down, but it's um, I forgot what the that radio uh, uh, guy's name was uh, Sebastian. That's what it was. He and I think he said it well. He said he said something like, uh, "I have a face for radio." <laughs> it's like I'm not I'm the mo not the most handsome of individuals, but whatever, man. It is what it is. I own it, and that's all that really honestly matters to me at the end of the day. And I could give two. Uh, you know what? To people who um, who got an issue with that, you know. But ah, the nature center. Forgot about this road. But um, yeah. So you know, I college. You know, a lot of them. I'm sure they've progressed when it came to IT training and whatnot. But I just. It, it was mostly programming and it wasn't well suited but unfortunately I switched I ended up switching my major too from um, computer science to computer science business apps because the mathematical requirements that were involved at the time with calculus 2 and everything else I'm looking at it and uh, even some of the chemistry stuff and I was like what what the hell man it's like I will never use this ever it's like the most ridiculous thing actually let's go up this way take a peek at the nature center um i was like there's no way and i could say with tangible work experience that i would ever use any of this in my uh, career and i was right here i am in my 40s and i can't remember a single day where i applied either chemistry and or calculus to my job now mind you i've done some scripting stuff 
Oh, this is all paved. Nice. I've done some scripting and I've done other, you know, uh, programming related stuff, but still nothing that ever required me to have that knowledge. And the business applications actually helped for um, business plans, uh, getting things done like that. Uh, and uh, especially when it came down to my uh, cost cutting, cutting measures, that was um, that was actually clutch. Like the things that I was able to achieve for free, just because I was determined uh, enough for my small business and um, cutting down on the massive amount, massive amounts of overhead. I can't even tell you how many times people reach out to me. Oh, you need to upgrade your phone service. Oh, you need to do this, and everything is on a rental based. Um, a platform these days you can't buy anything which is ridiculous and software and hardware is becoming more and more of that and it's like at which point do you achieve ownership and not have all these other oh, that's a nice car uh, all these other uh, ridiculous ex expenditures you know so it's just one of those things uh, anyway all right, I'm gonna end this here. I'm gonna just keep the footage going, but I, uh, as Lewis Rossman says, I hope you guys learned something. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you guys later on. Bye-bye.